there is a bill this year to eliminate daylight saving time. As we lose a bit of sunlight each day, it has some wondering if we will turn back the clocks this November. And the answer is complicated. Scattered showers are still progressing around the inland northwest today, but temperatures will be a few degrees warmer. Find out when to expect some dry weather in the forecast. Equifax is back in the spotlight. There is speculation the company's settlement may not actually give you money. We verify. It feels as if fall is upon us, but actually the fall season doesn't officially start until September 23rd. But we still want to know what's your favorite thing about fall. Latest surgery technology. A local man battling cancer was on his feet just days after chest surgery. How a robotic tool made that possible. Five AM now on our Tuesday morning. Welcome to Up with Krem. Great to have you with us today. I'm Jen York. I'm Evan Narani. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol. Boy, certainly off to a foggy start around the region. That's Evan? right. Yeah, started waking up to a little bit of morning fog, which makes sense. It's starting to hit the fall season. It really started oh feeling like fall yesterday with the temperatures today, with the rainy weather and yeah. the foggy conditions. Overnight lows a bit chilly. Yesterday mm -hmm. I opened up my window thinking, you know, usually I'm used to opening it up and leaving it open for an hour or two before I go to bed. 15 minutes and I was like, oh, it's like chilly in here. <laughs> this room is cold. Summer so, is gone. Yeah, sad to say, but uh, we've got our photographer, Alizano, driving around uh, in search of the fog, mm -hmm. right? So let's take a look at what we've got out on the roads right now, uh, where things are moving along. Our downtown shot this morning has been uh, pretty foggy. I'll let you guys run yeah. off. There we go. There's our photographer, Al, and his shot out there. A little bit of fog from where his view is. Uh, we're seeing most of our limited visibility really around the Spokane County area. Uh, even our downtown camera is picking up on a decent amount of it as well. Satellite radar showing about the northern third of Washington is seeing that rain. You can see all green on the screen a little bit less this morning than what we saw yesterday, uh, but still another day of showers is expected. Hour by hour temperature is going to warm up to about 69 degrees. That's a few degrees warmer than where we saw those temperatures yesterday. Today, not the best shot at precipitation in Spokane, but you can still expect uh, about a 20% chance of it as the day goes on. I'll send things back to you, Jen. All right, Evan, thank you. 502 now. Today, crews will reduce water flow in Elk Creek to search for a missing teenager. The Clearwater County Sheriff's Office says the 16-year-old went missing Sunday after tripping and falling down Elk Creek Falls. Today, the Idaho Department of Fish and Game will adjust the water flow at an upstream dam to help with that search. Yesterday, divers searched the water extensively with no luck. Deputies are asking the public to stay out of the Elk Creek Falls area while that search is underway. Summer is coming to a close, and with each day that passes, Spokane is losing a little bit of daylight. And that has people wondering whether the daylight saving bill to eliminate the time change will go into effect this year. Washington Governor Jay Inslee signed a legislation to make daylight saving time permanent. But until it gets approved by the U.S. Congress, nothing will change. And so far, no indication on when that might happen. That means come November, as of right now, we will turn our clocks back. Spokane Public Schools knowingly hired a teacher with prior misconduct allegations from another district. Krem 2 learned this through school records. The teacher resigned in June. Prior to that, records show SPS hired the teacher at Shadle Park High School. Records show the teacher was previously investigated for sexually harassing a coworker and creating a hostile work environment at Mount Spokane High School. This is the third SPS employee in the past year to resign amid issues with past allegations and background check problems. We do want to wish a big congratulations to Amy Campbell. She is the Washington Teacher of the Year for 2020. The state superintendent's office made the announcement yesterday. Campbell works in the Camas School District in Southwest Washington. But we also have to give a big shout out to one of our local finalists, Annalisa McCann. She works at Broadway Elementary in the Spokane Valley. Well, parking problems at Washington State University could be a thing of the past. WSU's Transportation Services has teamed up with an app called Way to Park. Drivers can now pay for parking remotely. This way, students will not have to leave class to feed the meter or risk getting a ticket. And if you use the app to pay for parking, you do not need a parking permit. 
5.04 now. President Trump is on the campaign trail. Last night in North Carolina, he focused a lot on a special election. Other politicians say it could give us an idea of what voters are thinking nationally. Crime 2's Nicole Hernandez is joining us now in the newsroom with more. Good morning. And good morning, Jen. So President Trump's North Carolina rally was an hour and a half long yesterday, touching on everything from that special election to his administration's accomplishments. The visit came ahead of today's special election happening for North Carolina's 3rd Congressional District. Experts are expecting the results of this election to give us an idea of how the country will vote in the 2020 general election. Since North Carolina is a red-leaning state, a Democratic win in this election could predict trouble for Trump's re-election. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Unsurprisingly, President Trump supported the Republican candidates for the North Carolina race, saying Democrats would be bad for this country. That was a theme throughout his speech as he was asking for another four years in office. And last time Trump was in the Carolinas was when the center back chance happened about Representative Ilhan Omar, who is a naturalized citizen. In the newsroom, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Back to you, Jen. Nicole, thank you. That is your morning rush. Stories making headlines in the Inland Northwest and around the nation. You can let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem. Our verified team fact checks suspicious claims you might see online and figures out what is real and fake. You may remember a massive data breach involving Equifax that impacted 147 million people. It happened two years ago. Now the company is back in the spotlight. Back in July, folks were offered a choice to sign up for credit monitoring or get 125 bucks. Problem number one, reports that nobody will get that much money. Problem number two, some people who picked the cash got this email saying you got to verify you've had some other form of credit monitoring and it's going to last for six more months. It says if you don't verify credit monitoring by October 15th, your claim is going to be denied. So we're verifying. Is the email legit and will anyone actually get the full $125? Now, we reached out to the settlement administrator in charge of the Equifax data breach. Denied. They didn't respond to our request, but the Federal Trade Commission did, and they said the email is legit. If you want the cash, you have to name the credit monitoring service you already have, or you can switch to free credit monitoring. Now, as far as cash payouts to consumers, the FTC says it's nowhere near 125 bucks. They say Equifax was ordered to set aside $31 million for 147 million people. More people than expected opted for cash, meaning if each person files a claim, you get less than a dollar. So, yeah, we can verify, yes, the email is legit and nobody's getting $125. The FTC is urging people to opt for the free credit monitoring service instead. All right, good to know. Coming up on 508 now, you might have noticed quite the drop in temperatures these past few days. Fall is now less than two weeks away. Creme 2's Dana Marie McNichol is in studio now to break down what the fall season brings. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Jen. I just can't believe it. It feels like fall is upon us right now, but actually the fall season doesn't officially start until September 23rd. But the colder temperatures make us think of the things fall brings along with the changing leaves. But before we get into the fun of fall, I want you to take out your phone and vote in our live poll this morning. We're asking you, what is your favorite thing about fall? Is it the fall leaves, pumpkin spice treats, the fact that sweater weather is upon us, or is it the outdoor activities? Well, I would say mine's the sweater weather. I love fall fashion. So are you ready for pumpkin patches, scary movies, and hot cider? Because locally here in Spokane, there are quite a few ways to celebrate. There's a Green Bluff Farms that offers pumpkin patches, apple picking, corn mazes, and hay rides. They also have delicious pumpkin donuts if you've never tried them. And if fall puts you in the scary mood, there's Silverwood Scarywood. Scarywood is open every Thursday through Saturday in October. And fall is a good time to get outside and take in the colors changing and the falling leaves. Manitou Park and Centennial Trail are two great places to go. And there's also Spokane Oktoberfest. You'll find German food, dancing games, and of course, beer. And you know it's fall when you start to see pumpkin spice treats popping up everywhere. In addition to the typical pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks, this you can also get pumpkin spice creamer or pumpkin cold brew. And as far as other sweet treats, you can get a pumpkin pie blizzard from Dairy Queen, pumpkin pancakes, 
from Denny's or a pumpkin Kit Kat. Mmm, all sounds delicious. The chilly temperatures of fall make you want to cuddle up with a blanket and binge watch your favorite TV show. Well, some of the most searched fall TV shows are Saturday Night Live, Grey's Anatomy, and Riverdale. All actually three of my favorites. I'm binge watching Grey's Anatomy right now. It actually helps me fall asleep. We'll go grab that pumpkin spice latte and head outside and enjoy the fall weather. We'll send it back to you, Jen. Do you have a favorite fall thing? Oh, I don't know. I'm such a summer fan, but I do like sweater weather. I like the return of cougar football. That's probably my peak fall activity. Activity. Oh, I love that. Well, right <laughs> now we see sweater weather is winning with 40% of your votes. So please continue to join in. Let us know. We'd love to hear it as, as we start probably my favorite season of the year. Yeah, less than two weeks away now. September 23rd? Yep. All right. Dana Marie, thank you so much. Thanks, it is 510 now. Well, so they say shorter people are at a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. According to a new study from Germany, researchers found for every additional four inches of height, a person's risk of type 2 diabetes decreases. It decreased by 41% in men and 33% in women. Experts say higher liver fat linked to shorter individuals may be to blame for the increased risk. Well, parents have all different rules when it comes to letting their children date, but here is a new reason you may want to hold off a little longer. A study posted in the medical journal, or in a medical journal rather, found teenagers who do not date are actually a little happier and have better social skills. Doctors say it's concerning because those young relationships may actually put kids at a higher risk for depression. Hmm. I can get behind that. Yeah. I didn't date anyone when I was growing up. Yeah, <laughs> And look at us now. I know. <laughs> I, well, I'm curious to see what the youngest age they suggest not dating up until. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I think everyone remembers like those middle school relationships that everyone was mm -hmm. in, and I feel like that was all like kind of drama unnecessarily at the time. Well, I had a, yeah. Well, I went to an all girls school, so there was no drama in school. Oh yeah, school, see, there we go. But I was dating a boy from a different school. Scandalous. Oh yeah. Romeo and Juliet, as they say. <laughs> it's pretty much the story. Yeah. Didn't go very well, let's just say. And did not like that. No, it makes sense. sense. Your brain is still developing. You're still maturing. Totally. Yeah. Um, you know, and especially in the days of social media, sensitive uh, feelings and you know, mm -hmm. it can be hard to take yeah. that first heartbreak. So spend more time focusing on yourself, yeah. on your friends' relationships, and all that kind of stuff. It, I'm not quite surprised, especially with the depression side of things. Mm -hmm. If you're getting started with relationships at 13, well, expect a lot of depression yeah. along the way. Like, as an adult <laughs> from the future, hold off as yes, long exactly. as possible. You have a long have way to fun. go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 5 at 12 now. Well, doctors may have found the fountain of youth. And get this, it could be right in your DNA. In the next nine minutes, we connect the dots. And supporters of splitting Washington into two states are continuing their push with a booth at the Spokane County Fair. But can splitting the state actually happen? We verify at 530.